What is up, Humanoid Nation? So we got another video from Screen Rant. They do amazing shit. Go check out their channel. They're amazing. I already said that. But anyways, fuck. <clears throat> I need some water. Anyways, 10 amazing movies that were almost ruined by these decisions. Let's see how fucked up this is. Let's do this shit. Casting is one of the most important aspects of putting together a film. Oh god, the the attack of the clones. Have the right actors for each part in order to establish the proper emotional connection with the audience. This causes them to test... Tim Roth is an amazing fucking actor. ...what ifs could have drastically altered the course of movie history. Here are Screen Rant's 10 movie castings that could have changed popular films. Superman. Christopher Reeve is still many people's version of the perfect Superman. But what about the Italian Stallion? Sylvester Stallone lobbied hard to play the part, but was turned down because he was deemed too Italian. He later found out that Marlon Brando... Hey, the yo, Lois, I'm um, Superman, I'm from Slapping Krypton. Uh, 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 part in the decision. Yeah. Using Superman as a paycheck and nothing more. Stallone loved the character in mythology, so he certainly would have brought the passion. But would he have done Clark Kent justice? We'll never know. Star Wars Attack of the Clones. George Lucas needed an older Anakin Skywalker for Attack of the Clones is bullshit within itself. Why would superstar Leonardo DiCaprio? Leo met with George Lucas to discuss the part, but turned it down to work on Gangs of New York with Martin Scorsese. You have to hand it to DiCaprio for his foresight. Gangs launched one of the most successful actor director combos of this century, while Hayden Christensen floundered into obscurity after Star Wars disappointed. Yep, he as still did. As he is, even Leo may not have been able to save Lucas's clunky dialogue. We much prefer watching Leo would have been Oscars weird in Star Wars. Wars. He'd be so out of place. Jerry Maguire. Tom Cruise was born to play sports agent Jerry Maguire, injecting him with a rock star persona befitting of his A-list status. But Cameron Crowe had originally envisioned a different Tom headlining this comedy, Tom Hanks. But the Oscar winner was too old for really? the by the time Crowe was ready to enter production. Tom Hanks is, is good, but I don't Hanks think he can do that. Great. It's almost impossible to see him as McGuire after Cruz's terrific performance. Imagining him on the phone with Rod Tidwell just seems wrong. Casino Royale. When the Bond franchise moved on from Pierce Brosnan, the producers I still say Pierce Brosnan could have done it one last time. Set. Daniel Craig landed the coveted role, but one of the names strongly considered was Sam Worthington, star of James Bond. Who the Carmen's fuck Avatar. is this guy? His interpretation was a darker oh, iteration. Oh, the guy from Avatar. Never mind. Charisma that defined the character. Qualities Worthington has not shown. Also from Attack of an action star. At that shitty Liam himself, Neeson movie. Worthington was not right for Bond at all. We released the Kraken. What the fuck is that name? Toy Story. Tom Hanks and Tim Allen are forever intertwined thanks to their work together in the Toy Story franchise. But Hanks could have been paired up with someone else. Pixar originally offered the Buzz Lightyear role to Shut up, Billy phone. Crystal, who turned it down. He regretted it after seeing the film. Billy Crystal would have made a good Woody. The right call. Crystal's hyperactive style may not have been the best fit for the macho aloofness that carried Buzz through the first oh. film. Made the character He's playing Buzz, story, never mind. And not as convincing for audiences. Crystal eventually got an opportunity to work with Pixar, voicing the lovably zany Mike Wazowski in Monsters, Inc. Pulp Fiction. Jules Winfield was made to be played by Samuel L. Jackson, but he almost missed out on his career-defining role. While Quentin Tarantino wrote it specifically for Jackson, he was very impressed by an audition from Paul Calderon. When Jackson heard this, he flew out to Los Angeles to meet with Tarantino again, Secured the part. He ended up launching his career to Paul Calderon is. And an Oscar nod. So it was a wise decision. Calderon got a small part in the film as bartender Paul, and he's so friendly and welcoming, it's hard to imagine him reciting Ezekiel 2517 as a cold blooded killer. Don't know who that guy is, so I don't know. Collateral. The role of besieged cab driver Max eventually went to Jamie Foxx and earned the actor an Oscar nod, but the character evolved as the project went along. The screenwriter had wanted to use Robert De Niro in an obvious call. Robert De Niro? He character. would be so out of place in it. Old for the part. In a I can't twist, picture him being like so Sandler weakened and shit. Michael Mann before the director decided to go with Fox. To his credit, Sandler has turned in some dramatic performances, but he's not as versatile an actor as Fox. Batman Begins. When rebooting Batman, Christopher Nolan tried out several actors for the Cape Crusader and chose oh. Christian Bale to bring the property back was to respectability. But one other name he considered was Cillian Murphy, who would play the Scarecrow in all three films of the Dark Knight trilogy. Murphy's a strong actor, but if he were Wayne, that would mean someone else would have to play Jonathan Crane. Christian Bale? Because the villain was well received, and Bale went on Christian to Bale would pay, play Jonathan Crane? Things turned out the way they did. The Bale voice has gone down in legend. 
Captain America, the first Avenger. Nowadays, it's hard to envision anyone other than Chris Evans as the Star Spangled Man, but the office star John Krasinski was in the running for the role. He exactly has the same optimistic, gung ho attitude that's so vital for the character. But it would have been interesting John Krasinski if he had the action as Captain America. Rock. Evans looked the part and already had major blockbuster experience, playing Johnny Storm in two Fantastic Four flicks. Even if those weren't great movies, they still The skinny run Evans version, maybe, but not the bulked up version. Back to the Future. Michael J. Fox is in Oh, uh, what's his fucking Fly, name? The dude that was Marty McFly before. Skip out on the film. Robert Zemeckis originally went with Eric Stoltz and Eric Stoltz. principal photography. But a few days in, he realized something wasn't right, and Fox worked a deal to take on the role instead. Zemeckis felt Stoltz wasn't funny enough to play Marty, and to his credit, the actor agreed with the decision. The rest Eric of the Stoltz is too and fucking Fox's dramatic. Sense of humor and comedic chops made him an instant classic with movie. Or is that just me? No one else would rather see introducing the world to Johnny B. Good. So what do you think of our list? Which near casting decisions would you have liked to see happen? Sound off in the comment section below and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Oh, I'm surprised you didn't mention Nicolas Cage as Superman because that was a thing that was gonna happen a while back. Kevin Smith, Kevin, blah, Kevin Smith told, talked about it because he was writing a script for Superman Lives, the dreaded script that everybody's heard of. And he talk, made this script and went to go see the producers or whatever. They told him, like, oh, we got to make changes. Like, director, it's like, met the director who had some weird shit. Like, I want him to fight a giant spider at the end. He can't fly or use the suit. And Nicolas Cage must be in it. That is fucked up. And the giant spider got put into Wild Wild West because it was the same director. Look what happened there. Anyways, what do you guys think? You know what? Do you know any other movies that have almost been ruined by their decisions? Anyways, take it easy, Humanoid Nation. Humanoid Freak Out. Bye.